I mean, I want to get into the stories here, but we kind of have to address what's going on around here because it's getting out of hand now. Uh, it's really, it's actually kind of unnerving now because that chair used to mean something. <laughs> Are you saying it doesn't mean anything anymore? And Well, it's just getting passed around. It's <laughs> musical chairs in here. It's still hollowed ground. I'll tell you what. And if I'm Willie Do watching from afar, as you would if you were Willie Do in Quebec, I'd be a little upset. Nah. That this chair's getting passed around. Next thing you know, Casper's going to be in that chair. <laughs> he's too busy pulling 1080s. Yeah. Actually, I wonder what happened to Otis now that he's out there snowboarding. I wonder where Otis is. Does Otis go snowboarding as well? Just hanging out. Otis is probably just hanging out. Anyway, we got Kirk today, ladies and gentlemen. There's been, in the past, a couple of comments here and there. Is that Kirk talking in the background? <laughs> Can someone give Kirk a mic? Well, you got your wish. I got it. Kirk's got a mic. I have a voice. Barely. I'm, am I coming through clear? Am I he, loud, Jack? He's barely in there. But. I'm loud. Enough about that. Jack gave up that spot. Now Jack's in Kirk's spot. It's, it's really wild. So you got to keep it locked. You got to pay attention to the show because you never know what you're going to run into. But of course, we have a lot to cover today. So we're going to have to just roll with it. Roll with the punches here. We have an exclusive from XDA Developers. And I got to give a shout out to Max Weinbach, Weinbach. Because he's been the guy on Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, S20 Ultra. He's been the guy. I don't know what he's doing. He must be eating his Wheaties cereal in the morning. Because... Every leak on planet Earth, it flows through Max Weinbach so far in 2020. So shout out. And of course, he works and writes for XDA developers. He's got some new information, S20 information. Here are the new camera features in the S20+. Plus. This is important because increasingly these things are just, I mean, the camera features are kind of where you start when you're considering these smartphones at these types of price tags. So he has some leaked information about the cameras, camera sensors. Uh, apparently there's a new Sony made IMX 555, which is an unreleased sensor. I'm saying we have the device info, the, the, the leaked screen grabs. If you scroll down a bit there, Kirk, you'll see with the watermark in case you didn't know that it came from the Weinbach himself. <laughs> you slam it right in there so you don't go messing around reposting. And if you do, it's well known. The originated. Originator. Originator. 12 megapixels, 1.8 UM sensor. So big pixels, 12 megapixels. That's that particular sensor. It's going to be on the main camera. And then it leaves uh, the rumored 64 megapixel. There was talk at one point of 108 megapixels. Uh, you got the, the four cameras represented here that have leaked out. Four cameras, including potentially maybe a macro, but you're going to have a lot of zoom range nonetheless. And I believe it's, uh, they're claiming, oh my God, look at this, a total of 30x zoom. Is it going to be all optical, one of these hybrid situations? Who knows? For me, what's interesting is in the video recording department, some, some major claims have now sort of been reiterated, possibly closer to confirmed now, including the one from the previous episode, 8K video recording. Kirk's a big video guy. Yeah, 8K30. That's Shot nuts. any video before, Kirk? Uh, once. One time. Once or twice? Yeah, just once. 8K video on a smartphone at 30 frames per second. It's present on the S20 Plus, so not just the Ultra version, but you'll see it on the Plus model as well, maybe even the non-Plus model. We have to wait and see, but that's where these leaked screens originate. There will be no 24 FPS. Kirk, cinematographers, very angry, picket lines, signs at Samsung HQ. Cinema! My life is in cinema. Cinema. So they went 30 FPS instead. I don't think that's such a big deal. People need to get on with it. I don't know. I don't mind the 24 here and there, but I don't really care that much. In 2020, I'll take 60. Yeah, I'll take 60. Whatever. I mean, you're watching it on your phone most flow of the time state. anyway. Flow state. 60 is flowy for sure. 
It's uh, you're just zooming around. It feels very futuristic. I don't know. 24 is cool for certain projects anyway. And the other cool part here, 4, 4K 60 FPS with video stabilization, likely both optical and electronic. What a time. And no HDR on that 4K 60, but that's to be expected, as well as on the 8K. Those are high-end features. But I mean, to even have to even have video stabilization 4K 60, that's pretty wild. And they're also going to bring the zoom-in mic feature from the previous version, smart selfie angle. Uh, that's able to tell how many people are in the frame and whether or not it should automatically adjust to the wider angle selfie in order to incl include those extra people. That feature is going to be in there. There's going to be the pro video mode that we talked about earlier. Four, se four separate cameras at least. Uh, so exciting times for not just this ultra model, but also for the plus model. Here are the specs, just to wrap it up. Main camera, Sony IMX555. That's the 12 megapixel sensor with the big pixels. Secondary camera is a Samsung sensor, 64 megapixels. Then you've got a, another Samsung sensor on there. The fourth camera is currently unknown, and the front camera, Sony IMX374, which is going to have the same 10 megapixel sensor as the current S10 and Note 10. So... We're getting closer to this launch. We're finding out more information. I think the camera heads are going to be happy and excited. We're going to see stuff we haven't seen before, including some of these crazy exotic resolutions, frame rates, stabilization, all the stuff you you love mm -hmm. in the morning. What do you make of, of this like in the mix morning. of Sony chips and Samsung, or Sony sensors and Samsung sensors? Well, Sony, I mean, Sony's crushing it, obviously in the mm. smartphone sensor department. And so possibly it's the way to compete. If if Samsung wants to be at the top of the food chain, be talked about in the same in the same paragraph or sentence as the other competitors, the iPhones of the world, the Pixel of the world, you want something tried and true. And so maybe Sony, maybe they they took a look and they felt like they could get superior results out of that Sony sensor even though they're Samsung and so increasingly we're seeing this and i don't mind it the component that's the best for the job even you got to buy it from another vendor slap your badge on it at the end these these smartphones are at their best when they're collaborative from a hardware perspective mm -hmm. and so it's not the first time we're going to see a sony sensor and and you know the real unfortunate part of what you just talked about is sony phones mm -hmm. where are the sony phones if sony's making these incredible smartphone sensors I'm not saying there aren't that the Sony phones aren't out there, but for whatever reason, they haven't really taken hold. Yeah, take like an RX and slap a phone on it. How slap a phone on the RX. Yeah. Might be a bit chunky. Some of those things have been tried. Uh, speaking of upcoming smartphones, we have an update as well on the OnePlus front in relationship to the upcoming OnePlus 8 120 hertz fluid display. People love the smooth displays. Kirk, you know this. You're aware mm -hmm. of this. You're around here. Mm-hmm. The, you're, you're, you're over there listening to the ranting and the raving. Lucky you. And so OnePlus is taking a big stance on it. They've got this display from Samsung. And Pete Lau, what is he, the president, CEO, CEO, founder and CEO of OnePlus. What a guy. He has a little demonstration, in fact, on his Twitter account. Actually, if you click off this tweet and just scroll down a little bit, you'll see a, is it a GIF? No, it's a video clip, in fact. And actually, if you go go to the one below that one, Kirk. Let's see, he's not playing. Go that one there. Yeah, that one. You don't have to play it. It's fine. Or maybe do a refresh. Ooh, oh, Willie Do's really upset right now. Oh, he's screaming. He's right watching now. what's going on here and the the no loading of the media, and he's not even enjoying his trip anymore. He's he's calling it a day and he's heading back. <laughs> he's coming right off the top of the mountain at the moment as your media refuses to load <laughs> and you switch browsers. He's going to snowboard all the way back yeah, here. Yeah, he's snowboarding straight back here. There you go. Now it's playing. So play the one there with the two phones next to each other. There's a 60 hertz and a 120 hertz. And it's essentially, it's a demonstration of the difference in the flow. This is like we were talking about with the 60 frames. Of course, double that, 120 hertz compared to 60 hertz. And you really start to pick up the difference on the slower scrolling where your eyeballs can see the jitteriness. Now, this is, it's very difficult 
to express this difference to people, honestly, the best way is to get it in your hand. And of course, I have a lot of experience with 90 hertz specifically myself. I've spent less time with 120 hertz, and I think that's a big jump to go to 90 at first, and then obviously 120 is a little bit more. How much you can discern within that difference, who knows? But it's in the slower scroll when you kind of slow your thumb down and you see that jogging, the jogging of the of the feed. And again, how big of a deal is this? Does this matter to you? Is this the next killer feature? It really depends on the individual. But I will say, once you get to these higher refresh devices, you get used to it and you go to the back to the 60 hertz and you die a little bit inside. Mm -hmm. So it's important to note. Now, the next update beyond... Uh, first of all, I should say, shout out to Pete Lau for putting this stuff on Twitter and getting out in front of it and saying, okay... I'm going to be the guy sharing these features in advance. And I just think it's a smart move because, of course, we are talking a lot about the upcoming S11 or S20 event. And, you know, give us as much information as you can at the moment. It's, it's not like it used to be where you can keep everything to yourself right to the event, Steve Jobs style. It's just the marketplace is moving so fast now. It's helpful to know what they're working on and what can I expect from their upcoming device if I want to consider it as my next one. So anyway, if you go to the next post there, which was just above the 60 versus 120, that's the one there with the skateboard. It's two clips with a, a skateboard kickflip. That's a kickflip, in fact. Oh, we're getting a, we're getting a, 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 update, uh, an update. update here. Quick update from oh, Jack. He it says again. it's let not a kickflip. It it's a nolly. It's a nolly kickflip. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, you're, it's you're a right. nolly kickflip. It's a nolly kickflip. Oh, anyway, it's a beautiful looking uh, skateboard trick here. And the main and important piece is they're showcasing this technology called MEMC, MEMC. MEMC. And this is something you've probably seen in a high end television. We talked about this on a previous episode, but this is a great demonstration of how it operates. And essentially, what you end up with through this technology is the ability to play back non 60 frame content 30 frame content and have it look more like 60 frame content on a 120 hertz is it display. adding frames or is it frame blending or it's something like that i remember this uh i remember this when it first showed up on tvs and some people hated it mm -hmm. they said everything looks like a soap opera what'd you do to what did you do to my christopher nolan films <laughs> and people would have to go turn it off so it's got to be some version of that, some kind of, they used to call it smooth, hyper smooth. I remember that, yeah. Uh, but it's weird that now in 2020, I watch this clip, Kirk, and I don't care about soap operas. I want the smoother clip. Yeah, I, yeah, me too. When I saw it initially, I was like, The wow. old me, I would have been all cinema. Yeah, I agree. You, if you caught me five years ago, I'd say, no, 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 I want cinema. But now, maybe it's the consumption method, the fact that we're on these smartphones, uh, the the type of content we're watching, how it's changed, but I'll take the smoother version. So OnePlus is claiming that they're going to have this very fluid video experience, even if you're not accessing high frame rate content, so that you can take advantage of this refresh rate on this display, the fluid display, for the given the wide variety of content available. It will it kind of like upscaling in a way, but instead for smoothness. So. That demo looks really good. I don't know if that's exactly how the enhancement will show up for you, if it will be that evident, because you're OnePlus at the end of the day. You're going to make it look as good as possible, but I'm glad that it's in there. All right, last piece of smartphone news. The Huawei P40 Pro, it's got its very own render going on, and seven cameras. What? Holy moly, seven cameras. How many sensors? Two on the front. And does that mean there's, if there's two on the front, is there five on the back? Is that what they're trying to tell us? That would equal seven. Mm -hmm. two, two plus five, Kirk. <laughs> Quick maths. Jack, so you got seven as well? <laughs> I'm glad. That makes uh, three of us. Casper got seven as well? No, he's looking at me like it's eight. He's giving me an eight look. Uh, what can I say? I'm looking at this render. Oh, by the way, shout out to it's Ev Leaks, Evan Blass. He's uh, responsible for this particular leak. I look at this, and I, I mean, it's really amazing. 
that this is this is obviously our future is these enormous camera bumps sticking out the back and it's funny because there was a moment where it felt like it wasn't going to go that way and that moment was the previous pixel which was a, they they went with a single camera and it was all computational it was like whoa which but, but but something weird about that phone was then it had two cameras on the front for the wide selfie yeah it didn't it didn't even know what its own identity was mm -hmm. saying we can do everything with one camera in the back the front will give you two so it was kind of strange but it did seem as though everything was going to happen in software they'd figure it out you would figure out zoom it, somehow it was going to happen can i ask you a question about the pixel really quick yeah you had the three and the four did you, oh, man, do you notice a difference between the three and the four camera wise even though the four has that extra lens on the back yeah, no, definitely in Google's case, most of the fancy stuff that's happening is on the software side. Mm -hmm. But I think the unexpected part was how much the average person was going to embrace the idea of the interchangeable lens life. Mm -hmm. How much they were going to click on a wide angle and say, oh, that's like with the iPhone, the latest iPhone. You see regular people out in public. They love the wide angle. Mm -hmm. I love it too. It looks amazing. They're posting from a wide angle now. And so... I think it, it wasn't necessarily always obvious that people were going to like features like that. I mean, obviously, some of these now might ship with uh, macro. I think the wide was the ma main play. Uh, LG did it a long time ago, and no one cared, probably because it was a it was a small time release. It was a it was a small market phone in the sense compared to things like uh, the S series from Samsung or the iPhone. So people didn't really talk about it. But I was talking about it back then. I said, the wide angle is the one that you need on there. And I wasn't the only one. A lot of people thought that. Fit more people in the frame. I love the wide angle on the front of the Pixel. Uh, it was the only way I would use a front camera is if I could take a group shot, which that happens in real life. People say, take a photo, commemorate the event. Oh, yeah. yeah. It happened in real life. Mm -hmm. So it turns out everybody, the general public, embraced this concept. And so now... The iPhone's got more cameras than, than you might have expected at one point in time. The upcoming S20 phones are going to have in, an incredible uh, set of camera options. And same thing for this Huawei device. We're all carrying interchangeable lens camera systems now without having to physically change the lenses, but just doing so in software. Yeah, yeah. Is five too much, though? Don't you just need a wide, a medium, and a telescope? No, because now people want the macro. People are talking oh, about macro yeah. potential. There's going to... Uh, butterflies! Right. Leaves, flowers, Butterflies raindrops. exist. And, of course, they're counting the two on the front there, Kirk, as well. Right, right. So okay. you, get the, you also get the wide and the portrait on the front. So it's, it's really wild. But they are, of course, all going to end up looking similar because, I mean, what other way are you going to jam all these cameras on there other than by sticking a rectangle into a rectangle? You understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, right? yeah. We're going to get into rectangle inside of rectangle territory if we need this many cameras. Uh, an interesting thing about this render, you still see the periscope lens, which was that crazy wild lens design from previous Huawei devices. It's still represented there. So that's pretty cool. You also see the Leica branding. So that relationship apparently still exists. Even in the absence of an ongoing Google relationship, Leica is still in the game. They're still down, down to ride. Leica can go on any camera. Yeah, they can They can go anywhere. This, You know what? This one, the details here is that this particular array is going to be capable of 18 to 240 mill millimeter equivalents. So a huge, huge range. That's of, better than the, the RX, Sony RX. Yeah. So, again, the death of the point and shoot continues, or any camera that isn't a smartphone for that matter. So there may be some degree of fancy software stuff in, in that zoom range there. We don't know yet. This is just a render for the time being. Uh, anyway, it's coming out soon. It wants to add, it wants to get added to the party of upcoming smartphones. OnePlus, Samsung can't have all the fun. Don't forget about Huawei. They just got to sort out their Google stuff. And then you're going to be looking at one of the more interesting cameras for 2020. Uh, speaking of weird legal stuff european parliament wants universal phone charger for all brands they're they're mad in the eu doesn't that make you mad that uh tangle rat's nest of cables no i love it that's uh, <laughs> i want my whole life to look like that doesn't it yeah it does <laughs> you know what it just means to me is i'm the only one that i'm the i know i know the path 
you know, someone else comes upon it. It's like a, it's like a passcode. What mm. goes where? Only I know. Come talk to me. No, I'm kidding. That thing <laughs> looks terrible. I'm scared. I have anxiety looking at it. Uh, although I will say in the past, I got too crazy with the cable management too. You can go too crazy in that way. And then it's not even functional. Everything's zipped up. And how do I even get to anything? Mm -hmm. You got to undo one mm -hmm. thing. It's scissors. And what do you, it's perfection. There's no such thing. Yeah. Yeah. People get crazy with the designs on their walls. Like they're, the, you, you know, know what's the perfect, PS4, Kirk? The, what's perfect? What's perfect? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. But this could use a little bit of work. Imperfection is perfection. Mm. No. No, Jack. It's not. You He's... little snowflake. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Jack needs to has a lot to say now that he has another <laughs> microphone. Jack said a snowflake is perfect, by the way. Yeah. And the reason Kirk reiterated is because you're used to being in that seat I and know. being unheard. I know the voiceless. Uh, Jack yeah, said a snowflake world. is perfect. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Everything's perfect and nothing is perfect. This is what I'm trying mm. to say, mm. including a snowflake and you, Jack. You got that? Anyway, <laughs> European par Parliament thinks that the charger situation is not perfect because, well, mostly because of Apple. They're mad at Apple because Apple has hung on to this non-industry standard connector, they claim 51,000 tons per year of electronic waste, an enormous amount of electronic waste, is to do with different types of chargers. So you're chucking the chargers out, you're, or you're buying more chargers than you really have. How many chargers you got in your life? Oh, I have a drawer of just chargers. chargers. USB-C, USB-A, Lightning, multiples. Chargers. I mean, it would be nice if we could just get one yes. little one. One charger. USB-C. One charger to rule them all. Yes, and in the darkness, get lost. Well, that's what they're, that's what they're working on. Apparently, they're trying to mandate through Parliament uh, that manufacturers abide by this universal charger policy. The thing is, it's mostly already gone that way, right? If so long as you're outside the Apple ecosystem, it's pretty much USB-C now. Mm -hmm. You're not buying any new USB-A chargers. If you have them lying around, they're still there, but uh, you've pretty much moved towards Type-C. So it does feel like they're targeting Apple specifically, but I will say, and I'm not normally defending Apple in this scenario, but I will say there is, there is an argument for the Lightning Connector, which is the enormous universe of third-party accessories that utilize that particular port. I mean, it's, it's it, honestly, you start to look down that path, you're amazed at how many things use that port and would require adapters, and people would have to then replace those items to step up. Now, gr could they have originally done something a little more universal and friendly? Absolutely, but at this point in time, and certainly in the early days, there was, an accessory motivation and and accessory support motivation to hang on to that connector. You may have had a speaker unit, like I said, various devices that utilize it, so you'd have to replace it. That could have been a nightmare for you. But in 2020, it's time to say goodbye. It's over. The conversation is over. It's wrapped up. We're, we're living in the USB-C era for now. But the problem is that this is too little too late because guess what? Apple already, they already gave us indication that they're pretty much done with it. The laptops are type C, the iPads are type C. So by the time, you know how long it takes a parliament, Kirk? You ever been to parliament? Oh, uh, yeah, once. I was there for two weeks. See? So slow. That's right. Even the lineup out. That's right. Just to see the place takes two weeks. <laughs> you want to get in the office and get anything done? I'll see you two years later. So, but what are they complaining about? Because if you get an iPhone, a new iPhone 11 Pro or iPhone 11, yeah, isn't the brick USB C to Lightning? Currently, yes. Yeah. So what are what you are, have to go buy a secondary Type C cable, C to C. So, what's your point? What are they? Why are they so mad at Apple? Apple's like pretty much all USB C now. No, but you have lightning on the other end. So that's one cable that's only useful for that one device. Right. If it were C to C, it would be the same cable that charges your laptop. Like, it's kind of crazy. You have a MacBook Pro mm -hmm. with a fat charger mm -hmm. capable of charging, more than capable of charging your phone, but you have to use an adapter cable. 
So now this C to C cable, I need another one. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I if the iPhone natively took the Type C, presumably I could live with one less cable. Right. Yeah. And maybe even I don't know how what they're gonna do. Would you could you tax Apple for shipping you constantly shipping you another charger? I don't know. I don't know how you would do it, but. Definitely, I will say that more cables exist in my life because I've got to hang on to these various uh, formats than would otherwise be the case. Oh, yeah. I'd probably be willing to live with fewer cables and feel more secure in doing so. Uh, but what do they expect? Yeah, I don't know. Does Apple then sell you an iPhone with no cable, just assuming that you have one? Maybe. If they're getting taxed for it, yeah. I mean, it is kind of weird, isn't it? Like, how many people are buying their very first iPhone in 2020? You have a lightning cable. Yeah, yeah. There's a lightning cable in every house. In, in the, the cable somewhere. is there. I'm not. I, look, I'm in not saying I don't want another cable, because I can see people saying, "Well, my cable's bent out of shape. I want a fresh cable." Don't give Apple an opportunity to not give me a cable. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they, they, it, it's true. I, I believe them to a certain extent. Fifty-one thousand tons per year of charger waste. That's that's not very. It's not very good. And Apple's done other things too, Kirk. Like they give you the five watt charger, but then sell you the 25 watt or uh, yeah. fast charge. Or it used to be 15 watt iPad brick. It's it's a bit there. There's game. There are games going on here. Yeah, dirty games, immoral. I'll just say, I uh, if we can, if everything can be on Type C, it's a better. Our planet is greatly improved. So let's all go Type C. But this is too little, too late. Apple's gonna do it anyways. So I didn't need, they didn't need the EU. But maybe, I don't know, maybe this pressure helps out in some fashion. Netflix is going to spend $17 billion on content in 2020. $17 billion. It doesn't register properly in your brain. See, that could say $17 million and you'd be like, ah, that's a big number. $17 billion? Wait, $17 billion on content. Content, first of all, content is expensive. If you start doing the math on that, because I got to be honest, I crack open Netflix. No, no offense, because Netflix has delivered some very interesting stuff to my life. But there's many times I crack open Netflix and I don't see the 17 billion. For me, I get it. If you want to have some high profile movies in there, those licensing fees are big time. And I get it. If you want to do original series with big names in it. It's going to cost you something. But I just, let me put this in perspective. According to Decider.com, the amount of money that competing platforms are spending on content in the same time period, it's kind of shocking how much more Netflix is spending. So, for example, Disney has stated, what did they state? I think around a billion. Let's see here. Around a billion? Yeah, one billion. Disney will spend one billion on original programming for Disney Plus and will have a total in one billion operating expenses. Warner Media will do two billion for HBO Max and Comcast NBC Universal will do two billion for Peacock. You're a Peacock subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> sure <Yeah>. am. <laughs> Man, who even knew? Sure who, who, who even knew it's so many services to subscribe to? Anyway, yeah, I, I, Comcast and NBC are big. I just don't know why they had to call the thing Peacock. Yeah, that's weird. You know, there was a time back in the day where, where I'd hear the old men complaining about their cable bills and say, like, can't we just pick what we want, the channel we want, and pay yeah. for that channel? Yeah. That's sort of what is happening here with all the streaming services, isn't it? Kind of, because unlike cable, there's, there's less regionality. Often cable, you were locked in. It was like, oh, this is the provider in your neighborhood, so shut up. They didn't have any incentive to really change the way they interacted with you. Whereas once everything's online, you're back in control to a certain extent. And you can say, I'm willing to have this subscription and not that one. It turns out, according to these polls here, that most people uh, prefer Netflix or at least have Netflix or use Netflix. Apparently 25% of respondents use Netflix. 18% broadcast, 17% uh, or 18% cable, 17% broadcast, and 13% YouTube. So Netflix is still dominating 
the segment as far as the way real humans are watching things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is, it's not... They're still... Each one of these platforms doesn't let you pay within the platform as you watch. You're paying the monthly fee. So the ultimate version would be pay when you use it. Right? right. Kind of like how YouTube Premium works. Yeah. You Although, no, that doesn't work that way for the end user, but it works that way for the content creator. The percentage of the thing you watch determines how much of the revenue goes to the provider of that content. So imagine if I'm a Netflix subscriber, but I don't use Netflix that much over the course of a month. Imagine I had some sort of variable payment, like minutes. That would be so cool. Like, then then you're voting for your favorite your your favorite series could get extended because of the amount you watch it or other people watch right. it. Right, but that sounds very dynamic and difficult to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, and also then why would Netflix want to do that? They want your subscription fee even when you watch nothing. I mean, I've been sending them a subscription fee probably for one hour of content for the last six months per month. Like right. I'm not watching a lot of Netflix, but I, I feel like I have to have this subscription around case you have some visitors and they're, hey, did you see the thing on the thing? And I, you know, you have Netflix. Imagine me being like, I don't have Netflix, canceled it, wasn't using it. It's like, geez, <laughs> man, ease up. So yeah, it's kind of like what you suggested, but it's also kind of its completely own new thing. One thing I will say, if money and budget equals quality content, then they are 17 times bigger than the other players. Even though the other players charge you less per month, it's kind of insane how much bigger they are from a spending perspective. Uh, if you've got Disney Plus at a billion and you got them at 17, is Netflix 17 times the product? I don't know. Ask people who use Disney Plus because it's not me. I didn't, I didn't do the whole Disney Plus thing. I've been doing old Simpsons on Disney, and it's amazing. Yeah, but I haven't I haven't dabbled with anything else. But I do have Netflix and Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. and I could give or take on either of those. Give or take. I, I wouldn't say that Netflix. is I think Amazon spends a few dollars better. though too. Are they? I don't they know. They're not listed no, there, but they listed. definitely spend Get five or six dollars. Yeah, <laughs> maybe eight. They spend some lunch money on content. Uh, so some of the ways Netflix is spending this cash, they have a multi-year deal with Nickelodeon for animated originals. They signed a TV deal with dudes who created or wrote. Game of Thrones? Or were they the showrunners? I don't know. David Benioff and Dan Weiss. D.B. Weiss. Yeah, so they're responsible for Game of Thrones. They're going to work with Netflix. They got some South Korean action going on with some major studios over there. So all this stuff costs money, and Netflix is ready to ready to pay. And they're kind of at a, at a stage right now where, yeah, the marketplace has – there's new players there. And in order to maintain the lead that you have, stay out there – you got to have this wide variety of expensive stuff that potentially people want to watch. Yeah. But, you know, me, I just end up on YouTube. Yeah, So me too. Most of the time, I just end up on YouTube. And what does that tell you? Definitely, it wasn't $17 billion uh, budget. The stuff I watch, <laughs> I'll tell definitely you what, not, it was a $17 budget. Yeah. So what does that tell you? I don't know. Either I have the problem or someone else has a problem. I don't know who has a problem here. Probably me. Uh, I yeah. definitely got some problem. Definitely. I'll tell you what, my viewing habits, I definitely got some problems. Uh, I mean, I wasn't watch. I didn't watch. Everyone was watching uh, Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda was everywhere. I didn't watch. Yeah, me neither. I watched it. The what do you have? Avengers Endgame. I watched that uh, three days ago. <laughs> it was out for. I was just pulling this up for um, budgetary reasons. Yeah. The yeah. I mean, so I'm just out of the loop sometimes. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just pop on YouTube and I just bounce around. I look around. Kind of, I'm curious what, what what's really happening. What are people doing? What are humans doing? I don't need the whole the whole uh, production. Yeah, you're gonna get it anyway. You might not watch Mandalorian, but you're still gonna enjoy all the Baby Yoda memes. They're coming your way, whether you like it or not. Yeah, those are free memes. Yeah, yeah, free memes. Yeah, you don't but anyway, I'm not taking anything away from it. I didn't even watch it, so I'm not taking anything away from it. You, there's good stuff out there for everyone, including Baby Yodas and everything else. Uh, this this wasn't so good for this person, though, as far as good things coming your way. Bubble tea causes blockage in teens' bowels. Report. You ever had bubble tea, Kurt? Oh, tons of bubble tea. This I'm is the bubble tea. This is going to wreck the industry. <laughs> this is the bubble tea story you don't want to see the light of day. It's like every time you're sucking back those bubbles, you're thinking, where are these things going? What are oh. you? 
Anyway, yeah, I'm a bubble tea guy as well. I head to the alley. Shout out the alley. This never happened at the alley. No, no. Good uh, stuff at the alley. No, this there. couldn't happen at the alley. No. Uh, it's delicious stuff. What are you going to do? Uh, apparently, this 13-year-old was loving the bubble tea. And around 3 a.m. came into the hospital with sudden abdominal pain. Oh, God. Isn't that your worst nightmare? Uh, you wake up at 3 a.m. with sudden abdominal pain. I've had it. It was a nightmare. Oh, appendicitis. Oh, did you? Yeah. You had 3 a.m. Literally 3 a.m. Woke up. Ah. Now, are you sure it wasn't bubble tea? <laughs> Could have been a bubble. I didn't see what they pulled out of me. <laughs> Could have been a tapioca. Oh, a big mutant. All one. along, appendicitis has <laughs> just been a bubble tea issue. Too uh, much. Anyway, so they did these uh, X-rays. They looked at the bowel and they saw. Two solid objects, couple of couple of bubbles in there, mm. and they had to go in and get and take them out. Now, I was thinking to myself, "Wait a sec, how does this happen?" And and, and so I, I read a little further, and apparently, this individual wasn't chewing the bubbles. He was straight down in them, just just downing the bubbles. Just gulping them down. Which which is very uncomfortable. I can't, I can't, I'm trying to think. I'm drinking the bubble tea. I only take two bubbles at a time and I'm chewing. Mm -hmm. And they're delicious. Mm -hmm. But for the record, these are uh, a starchy substance, tap, type of tapioca. I just couldn't imagine. I mean, it's bigger than a Tylenol. It's a big, it would be a big thing to mm -hmm. swallow and I wouldn't feel comfortable. But this individual was, was that that's the way they were uh, drinking the bubble tea. He said, according to his patient's history, the teen did not chew on the bubbles in his tea. Rather, he swallowed them whole. He had two cups of bubble tea and drank them the same way four days apart. And that's what did it. Two bubble teas, four days apart, yes. slurping the bubbles down, yes. no chewing. And they yes. clogged them up. Clogged them right up. Wow. So I had to put this story in here because I'm a, uh, I drink the bubble tea. Well, which one do you drink? What's your favorite? Oh, God. Well, the thing is, Normally, I just go with the classic, but then they got me started on the Dirioka, which isn't even bubble tea. Mm -hmm. It's you're talking brown sugar, milk. It's warm. It's cold. It looks incredible. And they're 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 stirring the bubbles throughout the day. They do it right over there. Yeah, they the do alley it, does it right. So do then I started job. drinking those. But I would say probably the classic is still just a black tea, but uh, black milk tea. Not even honeydew. Oh, you know what else I, I don't mind is they have one called the Iron Goddess, which is uh, oolong. Mm, oolong's good. I'll mess with that. Mm -hmm. So, But I'm going to be chewing my bubbles going forward. I want to put this story in there just for the other uh, bubble tea aficionados that exist out there in the world. Chew your bubbles. I just want to make sure the world knows so you don't end up like this guy. Uh, this could be industry scare tactics. This is actually Starbucks put this story oh. out. Scare tactics. They see bubble tea is infringing on the territory. It's, it's popping off. Mm -hmm. We got another bubble tea opening. Oh, yeah. It's popping off. Cha time. You got lineups. Yeah. It's popping off. Mm -hmm. And so we got the, uh, yeah, industry scare tactics out here. All you need is one 13-year-old to uh, slurp a couple bubbles. Well, let me ask you this controversial question. Custard. Bubble tea with the custard. No. Too much. Too much for me. Too much. Yeah. I want... Like I said, I gravitate back towards the classic. Could be my my nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. Back in the old days, I was going to uh, T one six eight one six eight on on Highway Seven one six eight. What what's it? What does it say before cafe? Tea, tea. shop. Tea, tea shop. shop. Yep. One six eight. Tea shop. Tea shop. One six eight. Yeah, that's bubble tea paradise. There's one plaza over there at Highway Seven, mm -hmm. which is every single bubble tea player is right next door to each other. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Go check it out. Anyway, yeah. Chew your bubble tea, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen.